Kuryu Keiki is your typical high schooler without a girlfriend. He shares the same desire as the others to fully embrace his youth. He awakens one morning from a depraved dream involving some of the girls he normally interacts with. He makes a commotion first thing in the morning, which wakes up his younger sister who sleeps next to him in his bed. Because they are sharing a bed, it appears that he and his sister have a close relationship. He visits his club, the calligraphy club, that day after school only to discover that the club room is filthy. The club's president, third-year student Takahara Sayuki, is already there, practicing her calligraphy and creating a jumble of old writings. To clean the club room, Keiki enlists the aid of his younger sister Kuryu Mizuha as well as Koga Yuika and Nanju Mao, two other club members. Keiki offers to stay behind to clean up the last of the items they used after they have all finished cleaning. The others later return home. Keiki discovers a letter left on the table after emptying the water bucket and returning to the room. As soon as he picks it up, he realizes it is a love letter. He is ecstatic about this. Could this be the last time he goes without a girlfriend? There is one peculiarity about it, though a pair of white underwear are sitting on top of the love letter. He asks his friend Akiyama Shuma what he thinks of the underwear the following day while they are playing cards. His friend responds that it's possible the sender dropped them because they were urgent. What kind of hurry do you have to be in to drop your underwear? Asks Keiki. The two also ponder why the sender failed to include their name. Could this be a joke? According to Shuma, playing such pranks at their age shows a lack of maturity. Shuma refers to the author of the love letter as Cinderella, telling Keiki that they must use a different name for her because she dropped her underwear rather than her shoe. He speculates that one of the women who cleaned the club room might be Cinderella. He advises him to go look for clues in the club room since no one entered after Keiki locked the doors yesterday. Keiki takes this advice to heart. He meets Sayuki as he makes his way to the club room. She notices that he has bags under his eyes and tells him to take a nap in the club room. He says he is class and declines the offer. He believes that if Sayuki is Cinderella, she ought to be worried about the key. She doesn't appear to care, though. Later on, Keiki visits the library to assist Yuka with her work there. Also acknowledged is her assistance with the club room the other day. Keiki speculates that if Yuka were Cinderella, she wouldn't be able to speak to him with such ease. Yuka asks Keiki if he enjoys big chests out of the blue. He finds this surprising because, up until this point, they had only been conversing casually before she suddenly barraged him with questions. She admits that she believed his membership in the calligraphy club was motivated by which senpai's magical chest. He vehemently refutes this assertion. When Yuka asks Sayuki why she has a hard time getting along with her, she responds that big chests are the bane of existence for all flat-chested girls, which is why she calls Sayuki Witch Senpai. She thinks Witch Senpai is so attractive that his large chest already goes too far. Shuma inquires about Keiki's search for Cinderella during physical education class. Sayuki and Yuka were both behaving normally, according to Keiki. He responds that if one of them is Cinderella, he won't be shocked. Shuma is constantly popular with girls, and Keiki notices this and admits that he envies his friend. He continues by saying that he's perplexed by the fact that girls don't like him. He replies that when you see a girl in trouble, you save her when Shuma asks him why he is so kind to Sayuki and Yuka. Shuma draws the conclusion that girls like him for these reasons. Keiki gets sidetracked by Mao during their basketball match because she believes she is staring at Shuma. A ball strikes him in the face, knocking him out cold. When he wakes up, Mao is already waiting for him in the nurse's office. She informs him that school has already ended. She responds that sort of, and that she was bored when he asks her if she was waiting for him. Considering that he has been disoriented all day, she asks him what his problem is. She also asks if he was staring at a woman he was interested in. In response, she asks him if she would support him if he were interested in someone. She smiles and responds, no, not really. She says, honestly, I can't say that I would support you. On his way home that afternoon, Keiki muses over the possibility of Mao becoming Cinderella. Outside, Sayuki is walking a dog when he runs into her. Keiki remarks that the dog seems carnivorous despite the owner's claim that she named him vegetarian. A short while later, the vegetarian's real owner shows up, thanking Sayuki for taking care of the vegetarian and bringing the dog with her. Sayuki admits she is envious of them as they watch the dog and its owner leave. She requests that Keiki pat her on the head. Keiki complies, and it appears that they attracted the attention of others. Sayuki gives him a very innocent head pat afterward and gives him a cheek kiss, telling him it's his small reward for always being so kind. As soon as he gets home, Mizuha is busy making dinner. She responds that she believes Sayuki was the last person to leave the club room yesterday when he asks her if she knew who it was. The next day at school, Keiki spends 10 minutes the previous day in Cinderella-related thoughts. If Sayuki is the one who left the letter and found it during that time, he must properly address her. In his mind, he imagines himself approaching her in the calligraphy club room while holding the love letter in one hand and the pair of underwear in the other. Sayuki politely responds that she is unable to respond to his query. Then he will insist that she put the underwear on right then. By doing this, he would only make Sayuki believe that he is a sleazy person. He converses with himself as he considers a more approachable strategy. He gets thought, why don't I ask her out on a date? Sayuki just so happens to be behind him when he says this out loud, and she accepts his proposal for a date. Sayuki confesses during the date that she appreciates everything he has done. 
If not for him, the calligraphy Shoto Club would have to dissolve. He recalls how Sayuki was the only member of the club last year and it was about to dissolve. Up until Keiki arrived and joined the group, that is, finally dropping the subject. Keiki queries Sayuki about whether she is keeping something from him. Perhaps you have a special feeling for him. She ultimately retreats without saying a word. Sayuki avoided him all day long at school the following day. He isn't even permitted to say hello to her. Mao listens to his confession and suggests that he employ the wall slam method. It's a unique maneuver that is used to prevent a girl from escaping. You hold a woman against a wall. Keiki queries her on the reactions of females to this tactic. She responds that it might be romantically exciting if the person doing it is someone the girl is interested in. He observes Sayuki leaving for home after school. He continues to follow her, almost stalker-like, but he doesn't try to hide it. He eventually catches up to her and seizes the chance to apply the wall slam move. He claims to be aware of her secret. He is surprised that she does not object when she asks him when. He responds that he just learned about it, and that he wasn't sure but grew uneasy about her demeanor. Do you dislike me now that you know my secret? She asks him once more. He replies, do you dislike me? Not. Keiki explains to his senpai that although he was shocked to learn the news, he didn't think it was in any way undesirable. He is overjoyed. Hearing this brings relief to Sayuki. The following day, she invites him to the club room and says she needs to talk to him about something crucial. The following day, Keiki follows Sayuki's instructions. He enters the calligraphy club's meeting space. She tells him that she had a feeling he might be someone who would accept her for who she is when he shows up. He reluctantly closes his eyes when she asks him to. The shock of a lifetime hits him when he opens his eyes. He observes Sayuki wearing a collared shirt that is not buttoned. What on earth are you doing? He exclaims. She fervently begs, please, Keiki, make me your pet. Keiki inquires as to what Sayuki means by this. She responds by saying she wants to be owned by him. She remembers what he said the day before about him not disliking her despite being that way, and demands that he become her master. She claims that she never considered the possibility of him discovering her secret, that she is an extreme masochist pervert. For Keiki, this comes as a complete surprise. Thus, she was referring to this secret. Before you even consider it, this home does not tolerate kink shaming. He remembers her admiring the dog and its owner that day and her expressing her envy for them. It turns out that she envied the dog because it had a master to correct it. She desired to receive a reprimand as well. Later on that day, in the hallway, Keiki encounters one of his instructors. He learns that he forgot to lock the club room when she went to check on it after he left. He discusses this with Shuma. He now believes Cinderella was present when he discovered the love letter and was in the same room as him. He speculates that Cinderella pretended to go home but returned during the 10 minutes he was away. She quickly hid somewhere in the room when she saw that he had returned. She opened the locked door after he left and walked out before the teacher arrived to conduct an inspection. That makes sense as a theory. Shuma inquires about Keiki's investigation of Sayuki while they are sitting on a bench outside the school. But he is too hesitant to admit that he discovered her very well-kept secret. He admits to his friend that he was unable to determine whether she was Cinderella. Shuma is questioned by Keiki about his fantasy of adopting a girl as a pet. Instead, Shuma presses him on whether or not that is what motivates him these days, to Keiki's vehement denial. Shuma goes on to suggest that he find out what the other girls are thinking. When the two friends enter their classroom, Keiki goes up to Mao and expresses gratitude for her previous day's wall slam guidance. She made it possible for Sayuki and him to reconcile. Together with Yuika, Keiki performs his library duties at the library. A wild Sayuki appears and whispers something into Keiki's ear as Yuika departs from her station to return some books on the shelf. He shrieks loudly, upsetting some of the students, because he is so shocked by this. Sayuki responds to his question about what she was doing by trying to gently blow into his ear. Keiki persists, asking her why, to which she replies that it's because she's bored. When Keiki states that he dislikes being played with, Sayuki immediately enters masochist mode. She declares, this is an arrogant mutt who infuriated her owner. Do you not believe that she requires correction? Please torture me as much as you want. All I ask is that you be as severe as you can. Yuika arrives and tells them to calm down. The two girls argue verbally, seemingly because of Keiki. Sayuki gloats about her date with him. When Keiki inquires as to why Yuika is upset and if she wanted to be given a parfait as well, Yuika becomes even more enraged and calls him an idiot as she flees. As Keiki follows her and beckons her to leave, Sayuki is still loitering in the library. She speaks aloud, You held my unwilling body down and so violently had your way with me. To tease him a little more. When Yuika hears this, she seems to become even angrier. He rationalizes, claiming that it was simply a wall slam. Sayuki chooses a book on training dogs. She then exits the library after saying that. Keiki is questioned by Yuika about his date with which senpai. He clarifies that it was not a date because she was only forcing him to buy a parfait. She also inquires as to whether he gave which senpai a romantic wall slam. He says he did in response. Then Yuika queries whether they are an official couple. Keiki is taken aback that she would even think to ask him that. He seems to have been giving Sayuki a lot of attention lately, and it seems like Yuika has been feeling envious of that. He asks her what he can do to cheer her up. On Sunday, she invites him out on a date. Keiki wonders if Yuika might be Cinderella at home. 
He tells Mizuo that he will be going on a date with Yuka after she overhears him discussing one. His sister responds that she doubts any girl would ask out a boy she doesn't like when he wonders why she would ask to go on a date with him. Mizuo offers to show him the proper way to handle a woman. First, arrive early. Keiki does indeed show up before Yuka. Step 2. Be sure to compliment her appearance, particularly her hair. He executes this with ease. After hearing this, Yuka appears happy. They visit a theater to watch a film. Keiki responds that she'll find out when she gets inside Yuka's question about the movie they'll be watching. Mizuo's third step, be sure to take the initiative. As he leads her inside the movie theater, he asks her to close her eyes. They sit quietly and watch the film. This portion is also successful because Yuka appears to have enjoyed it. Step 4, grab some fast food for lunch. This part is also taken care of by Keiki. They discuss the movie they just saw, a film adaptation of a book that Yuka had read, as they eat their lunch. Step 5, guide her through her shopping until she is happy with everything. Keiki also excels at this. Yuka is content after visiting numerous stores but making no purchases. She believes that going on a date is more important than shopping. She excuses herself to use the restroom, but as she's leaving, a group of guys who appear to be there to hit on her stop her. Keiki is now conscious of how long she has been taking. He goes to the bathroom and finds her surrounded by the guys, which makes him anxious. He steps in to help her, grabbing her by the hand and eluding them. Upon reaching a safe distance from the creeps, Yuka expresses her regret for ruining their date. She doesn't need to apologize, says Keiki. Instead, he apologizes to her. Yuka gives him a playful forehead kiss. She explains that it's just a small token of her appreciation for saving her when he asks her what it's about. After a long day, the two depart from the mall. Yuka keeps her arms around Keiki as they walk to the train station. She responds that her chest is quite insignificant in comparison to which senpai's chest when he remarks that he could feel it against his arm. Yuka dozes off while sitting on Keiki's shoulder as they board the train. She is racially mixed, he discovers later. He thought her hair and eyes were stunning, but it seems that others have been trying to push her away. He speculates that perhaps other people found her beauty intimidating. He thinks back to when they first started talking to one another. When it came to him, Yuka used to be ice cold. She frequently read a book while sitting by herself in the library. Up until she occasionally responded with a few words, Keiki spoke to her every day. She eventually warmed up to him over time and even started having long conversations with him. They now have a close friendship as a result of that. Keiki updates Shuma on his progress with Yuka the following day at school. He claims he is too preoccupied with the first date of his life to look into whether she is Cinderella. He receives a text message from Yuka informing him that they need to talk about something crucial. She invites him to meet her after school in the library storage area. They believe it must be some sort of confession when he asks Shuma what he thinks of the text message. Perhaps Yuka truly is Cinderella. After the last class of the day, Keiki moves to the library storage area. When he arrives, Yuka will be there to greet him. Can he find the girl he's been looking for in this girl? Yuka begins by expressing her suspicion that he might be the one. Even on their date, he showed kindness by saving her when she got into trouble. He has been so kind to her since teaching her how to be a school librarian. She expresses her desire for him to view her as his one and only. Keiki Senpai, will you be my servant? She asks. He is perplexed. He was completely unaware of the direction the conversation was taking. That came out weird, he responds. Did you just demand that I serve you? Yes, exactly and accurately, she replies. Keiki asks, can I please be wrong on this one? And just when we think Yuka is Cinderella, it turns out that she enjoys hurting her partner during sexual relations. Opposite of Sayuki in every way. If it's a no from him, Yuka queries. To defend himself, being a servant to a cute girl like me isn't that kind of a treat for boys. She innocently inquires. She adds that she will give him something valuable if he agrees to work for her. She suddenly begins removing her underwear and giving them to the terrified Keiki. He corrects her and says that only a very specific subset of pervs believe that boys are happier in their freshly worn underwear. He collapses after stumbling. According to Yuka, she will have to discipline him until he learns his lesson. He is made to gag as she rams her underwear into his mouth. When Keiki tries to fend her off, she becomes enthused. She assures him that her instruction will be gentle. Keiki falls unconscious with his undies in his mouth. For more anime recap, click here to subscribe and watch more. Thanks for watching.